etc. As most of us have just started out in our career with little professional experience, this webinar will especially be helpful for us. So please welcome Ms. Neha Gupta. Thank you so much for that introduction, Anushka. I hope I'm clear. Yes, ma'am. All right, great. A lot of you have joined and I'm very happy to see that. And I would be even more delighted if you put your videos on. It becomes a more healthy interaction. So seeing you, so, seeing so many of you, great. Three cheers for Kiran Deep. She's immediately switched it on. Hi, Vitisa. Hi, Apeksha. Hi, Srijoni. And I can see a lot of you doing it. Thank you so much. Come on the screen. Let's chat. Let's not make it boring like a webinar, but you can watch it on YouTube as well. Right? Here, I'm here to, I have, uh, you know, happily accepted your invitation primarily because I've been there and I have gone through that place where, you know, I was absolutely confused how to build my resume. And most of you seem to be freshers here, is it? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, so keep interacting with me because that's how you can make the most out of this entire interaction, right? And uh, I will go through a presentation which is the most technical aspect of resume, but most of it, uh, we are looking at say 30, 35, 30 minutes of presentation from my end, and then I would want to hear, I would like to take up questions from you, right? So another thing I had uh, insisted, uh, Ritika, that all of you should have a printout of your resume. I hope all of you have that, or you're just sitting like that. Uh, Ma'am, actually, we uh, circulated a form where they uh, dropped their resume in a Google Drive. So we'll give the access to you, and you can pick out like two, three resumes, and you, you can review it on the go, if that works. Okay, then send it to me on my WhatsApp. I'll just have it. Sure, 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 ma'am. I'm dropping it. But that. the idea is that while I am talking, take a paper and a pencil, take a highlighter, make a note of those things, right? Otherwise, no matter how many notes you make, what you have in front of you, makes a huge difference and make immediate current corrections, right? All right, Isha, do you have something more to add or should we begin the presentation? Uh, Aditi, uh, go ahead with uh, the guidelines. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking our time today as it's Sunday afternoon. Welcome to the resume building session with Sneha Gupta. Some guidelines before we proceed. We actually want the session to be really interactive. So please feel uh, free to ask any relevant questions in the chat and we will pick it up from there. For the people watching it on the YouTube channel, please drop your questions in the comment section and we will get back to you too. Also, it would be great if you could turn on your cameras for a better interactive experience. Uh, we'll get started with the opening note. Over to you, Sneha Ma'am. All right, Aditi, I would love to see you. Great, super, very nice. See, that's the least we can do, right? After inviting me to have put a face. Yeah, where are you hiding that beautiful face? All right, so all great. Now, the resume is, I want to start with something very, very important and weighted in front of all of you. Resume is your first piece of brand that you put out in the market. A brand, right? Nobody has seen you, nobody has seen you talking. It's a piece of paper that is going out there in the market, which is about you. So the most important thing, that piece of paper, that brand has to be, to be able to go to the next step of interview is relevant. The most important thing. So the relevance of that piece of paper stands true only and only if you have invested a lot of time into making a good piece of brand. Yeah, not something that you copy pasted from somewhere, not something that you just put it out there in order, whatever has happened in my life, let's just put it out there, let's just float it. If that is the kind of brand you want to put it out there in the market, then that's the kind of job also you will get in the market. Yeah, what you put out there is very important. Do not take your resume lightly. Recruiters, interviewers spend only about, what, five to six seconds because it's their everyday work. They become very good at it. So what they are going to point blank look at, look at is they're going to not even read your name properly until unless you've done some 
fancy writing out there and they'll be disappointed and they'll throw it through the resume in the dustbin they are just going to look at okay i'm looking for for a person of this particular caliber let me see do we have the keyword ta 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 ta, ta. oh yeah it looks nice then they give it a second glance all right yeah good and keep it on the side if you don't have relevance in that piece of paper that they are looking for you don't stand a chance so the most important thing in a resume building is you have to spend a great deal of time making it and the second good news is good news or bad news you decide is that you cannot have one resume for one job right yeah would you wear the same dress to every wedding no right you would wear something different for your chacha's wedding or you would wear some diff- something different for your best friend's wedding right so you would decide on every what, what dress you would wear and how would you want to put yourself out there right in every wedding that's the simplest thing it's like a brand and it has to hold relevance do you want to come across as a uh, best friend of uh, the bride or you want to come across some cousin of the bride yeah so exactly resume is like that ask yourself do i hold a chance of relevance in the eyes of the recruiter when the recruiter is going to look at me and how do you how do you judge that you you, you may ask uh, but uh, say how do i judge that well read the job description that job description and your piece of paper your piece of brand has to have similarities now when i say similarities doesn't mean it has to be 100% like you don't have to have everything given in the job description even if you have about 60 to 70% what is mentioned in the job description there is a very high probability that you will get the job how will you get the job by writing it in an effective way of course because uh, the most important thing is to get the interview because recruiters are not looking for a 100% piece of transfer from the job description 60 to 70% relevance is also good it's like very good so you it's, it doesn't have to be oh my god they're looking for a cfa but i'm i'm not a cfa i'm just a masters in finance uh oh they're looking for a risk consultant but i have done, not done frm so how do i put myself out there if you have done any paper any project in risk if you have if you've done your masters in finance that is relevant right if you have scored very good in quantitative math, uh, quantitative analysis that is also relevant so ask yourself for a risk consultant that is just an example what are the things a recruiter will actually enjoy looking at in a candidate yeah this looks nice this person can do the job this person has done so and so obviously a cfa and frm will hold um, an immediate uh, call uh, chances of a call but you also if you have not done it 60 to 70% relevance is also good so don't think that you can't apply for a job if i am not relevant i have to be relevant 100% okay so branding relevance of branding continuous re Uh, evaluation of that branding for every different job maybe same piece of job but different company you have to relook into it whether it is one year or two years go through it so you are i'm beginning with this word relevance and branding because i want that to be in your head when you're making your resume and then i'm going to talk about how freshers uh, what are the things that you can add for your fresher as well so you don't have to worry about it freshers also have a huge demand in the market especially now after the pandemic and there's a whole new world out there for jobs right now so if you are really going to add a different or you're offering a different set of skills to the organization there is a very fat chance that you're going to be picked on so we will begin and we'll share my presentation with you all I'm slightly not very fluent with the uh, Google Meet. Oh, window. Okay. It's not allowing me to share screen. Is there a particular reason? Does anyone have an idea? Ma'am, uh, there is an option to present now. You have to click on it. I did that, and I I clicked on a window, 
and I clicked on the Microsoft PowerPoint, but it is not allowing me to share. It, it says uh, Google Pro might not have screen recording permission. Okay, okay, allow me one second. No, it's not helping. Let's chat then. Okay, no worries. Let's chat. Let's not waste time. Let's chat. So, resume is basically a documentary presentation of yourself, which greatly assists you in various arenas of your professional life. You all know the difference between a resume and a CV, right? Curriculum data is basically your entire your entire history of your qualifications, your achievements, your experiences, right? All of it. And it's a, it's a very important tool in which you should keep it updated. Every project that you do, every experience that you hold, every achievement that you have in your bag, every skill set, every certificate that you've got, keep updating in your curriculum vita in a chronological order, right? That's your CV. Now from that CV, extract relevant information and put it out there in your resume, depending upon different kinds of jobs that you are applying for. So what is it basically? Resume is a documentation that is representing, like I said, and what is a shorter word for it? Can anyone help me here? What is a shorter word? It's a, starts with B. It's your brand. Yeah, it's your documentation of yourself, which means that's your brand, right? So it's, there is another very common question that I get to hear from a lot of pressure, especially, especially because you are beginning and I have a lot of clients uh, signing up to, um, you know, have their resumes reviewed, especially freshers I get a lot from. Not just freshers, but a lot of them, but a, a broad category is freshers. And they are always not very confident about the format. Is there a particular format? Can you please give me a format? What is the basic format? Just mail it to me. So it doesn't work like that. Resume doesn't have a particular format. You can create your own format. You just need to be very, very, you, you need to understand that there has to be a lot of clarity. Don't copy paste anyone's. Put, and I will tell you how you can create your own uh, resume. But there is no particular, um, you know, format. There are a lot of uh, formats available, easily available in tools like Canva also. You know the tool Canva? There are some beautiful Canva, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, formats available out there. Oh, yes, ma'am. I get a lot of yes. I'm getting a lot of yes for Canva. I think you guys are very pro at it. So go and look for the format out there. Yeah. And that's it. That's your place to start. Now, whatever format that you're picking up, just make sure that you put your information in the most relevant way. And I'll tell you how you have to do it. And secondly, make sure that your uh, spacing is very nice. Spacing, font, font size, all of that needs to be very, very nice. But don't choose something extremely fancy where there's a lot of spacing, a lot of designs, background noise. I call that background noise. Don't do that. Keep it very simple. Simpler it is, effective it is. It is easier to go through. What is more important? That you put things relevant. You put relevant things in a proper fashion. And when you put it, you highlight it in the right way. That's it. So don't create a lot of background noise by putting some lines in the background, this diagonal line. No, don't choose all that format. Keep it very simple and straightforward. Yeah. Next uh, is about using the size of paper. Now, um, these days, a lot of resumes are going through email. Most standard format is a PDF. And you should have that PDF, and I'm repeating it, have that PDF handy in your phone. Keep that handy so that anytime you get the opportunity, you can quickly edit it and you can quickly create a PDF and send it to someone. PDF is the most, um, you know, gener generic uh, format word for documents and that can be seen in most of the computers. It is not hanging or it does not open. So it's very compatible. So PDF format. Otherwise, if you're sending a printout to any place, Keep it simple in A4 size paper. 
do not make it glossy paper do not make it card sheet no believe in simplicity when it comes to resumes arrange the information chronologically now if you have some relevant experience related to a particular job say for example you interned somewhere very very relevant to the job start with that experiences yeah in your experiences start with that particular internship and this i'm saying it because i'm assuming most of you are freshers if there is another question for non freshers then you can shoot it to me once we are done with my presentation so start with the most chronological piece of information right so the most chronological piece of information is the most relevant experience that you've got if you are a fresher and if you recently done some internship put it out there if you are a non fresher and you have you do have some years of experience relevant okay now say for example you are uh, interned at um, uh, say uh, you know um, sales person for some boutique and you know you try to hands in class 12 doing something but today you're applying for a fashion uh, sorry you're applying for a financial job please do not put it out there it's irrelevant even though that is counts for an experience i am not denying it which you can speak about it during a interview but at that point of time it holds no testament to how good you fit for the particular profile that they are looking for so be very relevant about the internship that you are doing based on the job qualification i'm giving a lot of finance examples because i have a finance background okay and uh, i get a lot of finance inquiries as well and the other inquiries that we get is marketing arrange the information chronologically the most appropriate fonts are times new roman calibri and arial okay please make a note of this do not use any other fancy fonts isha i'm getting some questions i hope you're keeping a tab on all of them we'll take it up at, at, uh, later yes ma'am i am we just asked a question on particular online certification so mm -hmm. we'll keep a tab on that sure yeah so coming back to the fonts most important fonts are times you uh, i mean most uh, general do not use anything fancy appropriate uh, fonts are times new roman verdana and calibri and arial the font size needs to be 10 to 11 not more than that now say for example you really don't have too much to give as a fresher pages one page is also not filling it is like just ending it there like 3/4 of it probably increase the font size by one notch more 12 that's it and add a little bit of spacing that's it so it should at least look like a compact one pager okay and if you are someone with a great deal of experience you have something uh, of uh, training internship projects you would like to mention and it's not coming in one page then go maximum two pager even with people with 10 years of experience one to two year one to two page and that to front and back don't make a leaflet out of it pdf is absolutely fine but in case of a print out in normal a4 size paper take a front and a back that's it all right next piece of information uh, on resume is that you need to highlight your knowledge highlight the skills that you have picked up in different fields which can actually help you stand out in front of the recruiter use proper keywords now when you look at a job description and you see that this is this is the kind of person he's looking at financial person has to be very diligent has to be good with time management has to be a team player are they looking for a team player are they looking for a solo player highlight those words so what am i saying invest your time into understanding the job description you are a hundred of you you have different expectations you have different uh, jobs that you may be looking for right so depending upon what kind of job you are looking for the job description is completely different as say for example i'm looking for a digital marketer okay i'm looking for some for somebody from for uh, digital marketing managing my digital marketing for lots of learning right what are the kind of skills i'm looking at i want that person to have a little bit of experience recruiting a fresher is not a good idea at my end however if the fresher has side by side during the college time picked up jobs picked up picked up certifications in digital marketing helped couple of brands really leverage their work and uh, has uh, uh, capabilities like delivers it work on time 
um, you know, um, is a very good communicator, uh, is very diligent with their work. All of these skill sets, if they are going to be mentioned in their resume, I am going to pick it up. But if these things are not mentioned as a digital marketer or someone who's a earnest learner, because digital market is continuously evolving. You can't sit in, uh, as a digital marketer, you cannot sit at one particular certification for more than two to three months. You have to keep evolving. So I'm looking for a learner, right? So if that person mentions these particular skills that I'm an eager learner, I, and I see that, yes, he's a, he or she is an eager learner because I can see that the certifications are coming right after two to three months. Whole load of certifications are there. So that's a proof that that person is an eager learner, right? So... The idea is that you have to be a little smart. And I, I understand that you all are smart. But the point is, you forget to mention all this in your resume. You forget to put yourself in the recruiter's shoes and think, oh, if I was the recruiter, if I was a recruiter, what would be, um, how would I pick someone for this particular job? Right? How would I pick someone for this particular job? So be the recruiter and then ask yourself, if I need someone for digital marketing, if I need someone for marketing, if I need someone for finance, if I need someone for whatever category of job, this is the job description. What else should I add? What are the different keywords that I can add to make it more effective, to make sure that I am the person? So spend some time doing that. Highlight uh, your um, headers. Whatever is your header, sometimes you put the same font size or sometimes you make the high. Highlight the headers too big. So don't make that mistake also. If you are writing education and qualification, keep it bold and keep a, keep a liner. And if it is a PDF, you can give a side color also, like a gray, neutral colors. But don't give green, black, uh, sorry, pink. Don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't uh, push you to do that. It's not a good idea. Even if you are in the creative field, field uh, you focus Put your attention of the recruiter on the information and not the design of the entire piece, right? Yeah, your, your particular qualification of your uh, abilities are going to come through what is written out there and not putting a lot of color out there. Don't make it a rainbow. Keep it very neutral. Keep, it, keep the grays and keep the light uh, blues probably uh, in the PDF format, but nothing more than that. Next resume tip that I want to come uh, with is don't go too much into detail about explaining one particular job or education qualification. Keep it minimal. Try to learn how to write your uh, achievements, qualification crisp. Like you put it in a such a way that your action was it, what is, words are also there. You, what you have uh, achieved from that particular uh, uh, internship or experience that is also out there. It is much better if it is in a number format. Yeah, because it becomes more uh, quantifiable. So say, for example, in an internship, I hear these days some of you are doing amazing internships. I see some of you doing such amazing internships, leading teams of 10 to 15 people. And I'm like, wow, this is fabulous. So when I'm reviewing, reviewing these kind of um, fresher uh, resumes, I'm pretty impressed that you led a team of 15 people in so-and-so project. That's it. Now, you don't have to go to the details of what you did, how you did, how did you manage. That is something I'm going to explain during an interview. You are also aware that we don't use the word I, right, in, an, in a resume, because it is you. So I don't, you don't write, I led a team. Led a team is perfect. So I never comes in a resume. We all know that's, that this is Anushka's resume. This is not somebody else's resume. And it is Anushka who has led. So she doesn't have to write, I led. She didn't uh, do it in support of Shijoni or Aditi. She did it herself. So when you put yourself in, put out information, um, don't put I. This is something a lot of senior people also do. I don't know why, but yes. So don't put any I in your resume. Use action words and powerful words. And I, and I keep showing that in a lot of my content on Instagram as well. It is important, yeah, to use action and powerful words. Relevant. But don't go to the, uh, you know, uh, dirt of just 
understanding a resume that if I am going to use powerful words, I will get a job or I will get an interview call. See, it is important. It is a part of a resume, but it is not going. It's not going to get you. Uh, it's not a sure shot formula of getting an interview just because you use a powerful word. You have to be very relevant, and don't put too much of your energy out there. Even if you use a nice, effective, powerful action word, it's good enough. Don't think once you have your resume and you want to make it more like you know, add that edge to it. Then look for more synonyms of those action words. But first and foremost, think of how I can make a relevant resume, and then add that edge by looking for more powerful synonyms for those action words. So that piece of energy comes at the second stage, right? Next is staying relevant. Mention only those specific courses and training programs that are relevant to the job. Each resume has to be personalized and unique. And for every new interview that you attend, you have to submit a new and impressive resume. Your curriculum vita is the place where you uh, put everything, and your resume is the place where you make things more relevant. So that is the main difference. Things uh, where uh, people or recruiters don't like colorful or glossy paper, flashy fonts. Okay, another very interesting thing, and I still see to it till today. You put a big resume written on top of your resume. You don't have to put it out there. It is a resume. I know that, right? So delete that. De delete that headline resume. It's your resume. I know it because I'm, I've asked for it. You send me a resume. It's, not, it's like a newspaper. The first. The, Instead of Hindustan Times, they will first write the newspaper. And then they will write Hindustan Times. We know it's a newspaper. So we know this is Aditi's uh, resume. So you have to highlight Aditi Chaurasya on the, on, the, on the top. And you don't have to go all loud and uh, capital letters with it. But that's how you begin. Aditi Chaurasya at the top. And then you add a couple of your details there. And most importantly, how many of you have LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn? Are you there on LinkedIn or not? If you are not, I have some very bad news. Get on it today. Start working on it because if you're not going to be on it, there's a very fat chance that if you even had the probability of being out there in the recruiter's eyes, because these days recruiters are going through your LinkedIn profile. It's one of the best places to see how you're performing, what you are doing. It's become a very, very relevant professional branding place. Very relevant. So if you don't have today a LinkedIn profile, I say you put it out there. And even in your resume, you can put it out there. LinkedIn. So that, Or if you have a web page, if you blog, you can put it out. That also you can put it out there. And more than that, if you have a LinkedIn profile, perfect. Put it right below your contact details. LinkedIn profile. And that's how you can uh, begin your resume. What next? What they don't like? Oh, this is again. I and I have had arguments on this particular thing. Pictures. You all have become so comfortable putting your pictures out there. Like you know, look at me and hire me. Don't look at my qualifications. Don't look at what I've achieved. But look at me. Look at my nice picture I've put out here. So the thing with picture is, first of all, uh, there is no particular legal law which says in India, but in many countries it is illegal to put a picture or ask for a picture until and unless you belong to that kind of an industry, yeah, like a fashion industry, a modeling industry, then you ask the person's picture or a front desk. If you have a front desk uh, opportunity and you want uh, a picture of that person, you know, some countries do allow it. But the problem with putting a picture out, out there is, is extremely biased. It could be gender biased. It could be color biased. It could be biased at different levels. Do you want to work in an organization which is hiding you based on a bias? So one hand, we are talking about being recognized for our qualifications. And on the other hand, I'm putting myself out there with my picture. So 
think about it before putting out a picture. It's not a crime, but I get very disappointed looking at a picture because I'm more interested. And also, what happens is it takes a considerable amount of space. I would rather put my experience and qualifications more nicely out there rather than putting my face out there. And even uh, some companies which are ATS driven, where they're actually scanning for keywords, your picture takes up a whole space. Think about it. Now that reminds me, the keywords which are mentioned in a job description, mention not just once, but at least twice. Try. Now don't go overload and just add it for the sake of it. But if they are looking for a particular qualification or a degree, make sure that degree is coming at least one to tw twice somewhere in the resume. So that keyword, get, get yourself placed nicely because even humans are scanning five to six seconds. And even if they have software, even if like I've spoken, I have friends in uh, the recruiter, um, recruiters in Europe based as well and American based uh, companies as well. And let me tell you very frankly, there is no particular machine which on the basis of which uh, companies are hiring. Ultimately, it's humans who actually scan through. Yes, they do take help of softwares to scan through the keywords. It helps them. But ultimately, it's humans who are making the decision, right? A computer is not going to make that decision, not yet. But we do have ATSs in many companies to look for keywords and to ask which ones stand out the most. So in that case, keeping taking that to our advantage, make sure that your resume has keywords probably mentioned at least twice. Once once is good, definitely very good. Two twice is excellent. Got it. Use of eye is not a very good idea. Pictures we've already discussed. All right. This is amazing. Grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes. The best way to make sure that you don't have spelling and grammatical mistake is to get it uh, proofread by someone. If you can get it proofread by a professional, even better. If you can't get it done by a professional, then get it done by a friend, colleague, anyone you trust. Someone who can actually scan it nicely and not just for the sake of it and get your entire app together. Yeah. Do not lie about anything. If you are pursuing a particular uh, qualification, make sure you are. Don't mention it for the sake of it. It is not a brilliant idea at all. Even if you get by the job, but whenever it, the lie comes into picture and it is highlighted someday or the other, it's going to throw a very, very bad light on your entire professional life. So. Whoever you are, whatever you do, be proud of it. Put outside, uh, put out there only who you are and not what you are not. Don't, if you are talking about, say, for example, your institution, right? Your institution. What is the name of your institution? Once again, please, Aditi. Sorry, ma'am, I missed it. What is the name of your institution? Please. Ma'am, Calcutta University. Calcutta University. Yes. So what is the short form you use? CCU. CU. Only CU. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, in your uh, education qualification also, don't write, you know, 2006 graduated in 2006, comma, CU. Nobody's going to understand that. And you can't assume, oh, CU is everybody knows, DU, CU. No. Put it out there, Calcutta University. So that's a very uh, plain and simple because this is what I spot at a lot of places, university names, uh, any project that you've done in, in a particular company, you, you put a short form out there. Any particular degree that you've done, you put a short form out there. Expecting, yeah, this to pata over. he will know or she will know. No, you cannot assume that the person knows because understand this, every recruiter is not qualified for that particular job. They are recruiters. So you have to give them an idea of what is the full form. Any big type jargons which you yourself don't understand, don't put it out there. 
Yes, it does, Anushka. It does. I'll tell you why it does at the end. Irrelevant details, you can completely remove it. One is your marital status, your gender, your passport number, your references. So when you, references is something which I'm not looking at in a resume. When you come for an interview, that's when I ask you for a reference. And then I will ask you to give me the reference and then we'll go through that procedure. But in a resume, I'm not looking at a reference uh, attached or anything like that, not required. So you can remove that piece of information. Okay, now this is very, very important and I know most of you understand the importance of this, but I want to again highlight it. Do not copy paste. What happens is you copy paste someone's objective or summary. It's a bad idea. You, I am telling you, at the heat of the moment, you will just copy it. Oh yeah, this sounds just like me, let me just copy it. But when the interviewer is going to ask you simplest question looking at that particular objective, you will be in a completely different place, space, and it will be blank. You have to own that resume. Every word, every comma, every full stop, every capital word, every highlighted word is you. You should know my left side of the resume has this, my right side of the resume has this, my top right has this, my top left has this. Yeah, I copied yours. Like, what did you do? He asked me and I couldn't understand. What does it mean? I know a lot of you do that. And I know where it, where do you, why do you do that? Because you are so flustered with the idea of writing your resume. Whatever resume you write, and I hope by the end of the session, it is helpful enough that you are able to write it. And I'm telling you, it's not rocket science. It's you. Just put it out there. And do not copy and paste because if, if, Anything in the resume you don't understand, that's it. You have killed it. You've killed your impression. Another thing, write simple what you understand. Obviously, now if I'm saying that you should understand the top right, left, uh, top bottom, left, uh, right, left, bottom, whatever it is, you should be aware of the comma, the full stop. You should understand every single sentence which is out there. If I ask you, okay, your summary says this and this, what does it mean? Can you just elaborate? And you're like, ah. Oh, you just wrote some, uh, you know, flowery language. For example, I had one of these resumes that came to me, which said, in the objective, hear me out, okay? Aspiring for a career that places me in a challenging position within a fast-paced and learning-oriented environment for developing my hard skills and interpersonal skills and work with the dynamic skills that I have to demonstrate high productivity and be a role model for other employees in the organization. Now, High funda language, hard skills, technical skills, you know, um, uh, dynamic skills. Uh, I'm looking to develop myself. And if you straight away ask the person, what do you mean by hard skills? The person has zero idea of what they are talking about. So when you are constructing an objective, although for freshers, today the objective still holds true. I'll tell you why. Otherwise, for experienced people, I, I ask them to remove their objective. I want them to only write their summary. Yeah, objectives still holds to a little bit. Otherwise, it's a redundant thing for experienced people because summary is what is relevant. I know what you want to do in life and etc. But I want to know whether you fit in for the job or not. And which is why I want to see the summary. What your education qualification, your experience, do it, does it fit in with my profile or not? So today, objective kind of has become redundant for uh, experienced people. But for freshers, it still holds true. But be careful what you put out there in uh, objective as well. Be very careful of what you put out there in objective. Do not write rubbish language. I have seen obtained rubbish written in objectives. I don't know why people are put out there. It's like, you know, it's a, a one objective has been doing the rounds around the world. It's like that. Copy, paste it, thoda se change kiya, or se change kiya, and you put it out there. And I still don't understand. When I am not able to understand as a recruiter with so much experience, I even I feel uh, I, I I you know really don't want to put the person's resume I am reviewing to put that person in the in the spot, but I do it, and the person is so embarrassed because they've clearly copy pasted from somewhere. This is after the second step of reviewing. I say okay, just go through it. I hope nothing is gone. No, 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 nothing is copy pasted. Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. Okay, just go through it once more. Okay, and then I shoot and I start with the first objective. And there, 
so be very careful don't put any thing rubbish in your objective anything anywhere which you don't understand never copy anything for the heck of it if you like something if you get inspired by something that's good enough but you should be able to justify why what it is doing on your resume right you should be able to justify that now couple of freshers uh, tip that i want to tell you and i want to begin by telling you you have a huge market out there so don't be disheartened work on yourself there is a real need for people who really want to work who are diligent who are passionate who are continuously upgrading themselves who are doing things out of their comfort zone believe me you will be instantly picked up instantly because just getting a degree in today's times is not enough as a fresher how many of you agree that you do have the time to do internships not just one not just two many times lot of time but you do take your college life slightly easily i've been there i've done that so i know it and i know what kind of people stand out you have to work on yourself you have to i know anushka said she started with this sentence that there is one place and thousands of candidates that's true that is a true picture but that one candidate can be you because it's very easy you just have to be that one candidate who's working on yourself who's diligent who's continuously upgrading who's doing things out of their comfort zone somebody asked in the question and answer does online certifications matter yes they matter you know why not because there is a certification label out there of course that it is but i see that that person is diligently looking to upgrade themselves is looking to be is looking passionately grow in the field that i am looking to hire so i want to i want that kind of person so online certifications value obviously depends upon where you are doing what you are doing but most importantly as a recruiter i am impressed that oh wow you're doing this but you're doing this also because you want to learn more and i want that kind of a person on my table i don't want a kind of a person who's just got the best gpa zero level of any upgradation let me tell you very honestly if the person has an average gpa but has a high level high level of experience internships projects certifications online certifications i'm hiring that person i'm not hiring the person with the highest gpa do you see the difference i want someone who wants to grow with me and if i can see that in a resume i know i'm hiring that person i'm not just looking for a person who is just looking to get the best gpa in the thing in in the university i'm lo also looking for a, for a person who's trying the best and is actually doing something about it so online certifications really matter and it's a good news for all you freshers out there um tenth number of online certifications are relevant online certifications are there go put your mind into it look for what is relevant for your particular field and go and do it you will not only gain knowledge but you will get an understanding and you'll be able to put it out there in your resume to show your sincerity for growing do not get intimidated by competition you can highlight your academic record absolutely if it is good if it is not very good put it out there but somewhere at the bottom okay i don't want to see something like that i want to see more of what you have done better yes interpersonal skills like empathy matters a lot in a workplace but if i ask you in an interview you got to be prepared as when did you find yourself that you have very empathetic skills or your emotional intelligence is very high or what do you have to say about inter emotional intelligence so if you are putting those words on the resume get ready to answer also accordingly you should have practical experiences and examples from your life it could be your academic life from your community life from your family life what you can discuss all of this preferable as a academic life or community life and then family life all right um now before i end 
uh, the presentation and take up the questions. I want to just tell you one more thing. It's very important to know yourself before you start writing a resume. You know, it's like meditative. You can't write a piece of yourself or a brand until you don't know who you are. What do I mean by that? I have been in the last 40 minutes insisting, 45 minutes insisting only on one thing, that you should be able to own this resume, right? And for that to happen, you've got to know yourself. Have you heard of an analysis called SWOT? I would have loved to share my screen with you, but I'm unable to. SWOT, yes. S stands for? S stands for? Strength. Strength. W stands for? Weakness. O stands for? Opportunity. Opportunity. S stands for? Strength. So you have to understand your strength, which are your opportunities. You have to understand your weakness, which is your threat, and accordingly summarize that in a piece of paper and see where your life is going. Today you want, you see yourself as a director of a consultancy company, for example, see what is your SWOT? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How reaching that particular goal in my life, I already have these opportunities that will help me. And what is my weakness? which is not going to help me and I need to work on that. Because this is how you will understand yourself. And this is the first step of resume writing. When I do resume writing with my clients, I start with this particular step. I don't open a format. I start over here. So it's very important to know your SWOT. Very important. Because this is a piece of brand, you're going to put yourself out there in the market. And if you follow this, I'm telling you, you will get an interview call. All right, let's go ahead with questions. Uh, also, ma'am, we had a Google Drive of all the resumes we have collected from people. So I've asked Viridhika to share it with you. All right, am I supposed to be doing something with that, Isha? Uh, Ma'am, if you could, you know, pick out uh, two, three resumes and you could, you know, review them and tell them that the, uh, these uh, mistakes should be avoided and stuff. Okay, let me see. But I'm not able to, okay, I can, let me just try to open them. Okay, so Harshita has a picture of hers. It has a resume written on top. Um, the First information, you don't have to write email ID and then you put your email ID. If you put Solanki Harshu20 at gmail.com, that's also as good. Try to have a more professional email ID as much as possible. Yeah. Create a second ID or a second, um, I would say, um, a blog where these days you can create any kind of uh, email IDs. LinkedIn profile. All right, LinkedIn profile, not necessarily that you have to write it like this until unless you're attaching it to the PDF. But what you could do is LinkedIn and put a colon and you could put your handle's name. Now your handle name, uh, you can change it in, in uh, LinkedIn as just Harshita-Singh-Solanki. What there is a particular way to do about it, and I can't. Exp I would have loved to show you on the screen right now. It's a very simple thing. So instead of putting uh, like a Harshita dash like www.linkedin.com slash dot uh, slash in slash Harshita dash thing dash Solanki and the whole number, uh, which is a part of the LinkedIn profile, that's not a good idea. We could change that objective. Okay, so here in the objective comes the word I. I would I would ask you to rewrite this entire objective without the word I. I know it's you, Harshita, that who wants to achieve, learn new skills, etc. Educational qualification. What is other details? Do not ever write other details. Terrible idea. You have to be very specific. What is that? What is other details? Qualifications, so you've done some courses from TCS, so put it out there. Uh, 
qualifications or certifications whether whatever it is if it is a certified one put it out there no so when you put certification what is done camping okay one second harshita is there online with us harshita are you there Anushka is asking, ma'am, don't you think for someone who's got? Anushka Singh Solanki is not here, I guess. Okay, because it would have been nice if I was discussing with her present here. So, not a good idea. I don't want to discuss her. Oh, uh, ma'am, you can check mine. You can find mine as well. That's Isha Roy. Let me check. So we'll do one more, okay, Isha, and then we will take up the questions for the last five minutes. Yes. Yeah, got it. So Harshita has a lot of editing to do. I see a lot of you very comfortable with your picture. Please remove your pictures. So many of them, and see, there's a lot of background noise. See, it looks nice like that, but believe me, when the person is going to scan it, they're going to be scouting for the keywords. Big, your pictures are the biggest highlight. See, a lot of you have put your pictures as your biggest highlight. Isha, I can't find. Let me write. Isha. Oh Isha, yeah, right. There is a Zebaisha, but there is no Isha. Where is Isha? Uh, ma'am, uh, just put in Control F and search Isha. I did, I did that, but you're not there. What's your? Uh... No, I don't think so. Probably you've not updated the name of your document as Isha. Uh, it is updated. Uh, let me share it. Wait. Let me... Isha, you got it. Yeah. 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 Isha Roy. Good. Isha, good. A lot of information, but it requires a lot of spacing as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Education and awards. No. So it needs a little bit of work on Isha. Relevant mm -hmm. of, I would say, since you, I'm just scanning through. So I would want you to put your work experience first and then come your education and awards. Okay. Awards which are relevant, but for that, this looks like a complete CV to me. Is that so, Isha? Oh, uh, no, I wanted to make it a resume. And what is the job that you are uh, aspiring to qualify for? From this it was a resume? founder's office intern. Founder's office? Intern. Like it was for growth and strategy. All right, so why do we need um, achievements? So see, I don't want to start reading about that in a particular job with your appreciation in dance and sports. That's a very nice thing that you have an extracurricular bandwidth, but, and that too you have written 2010 to 2020, right? Mm -hmm. So I would like to see your work experience first, then your education and education and remove the education and awards because they're not going hand in hand. So you could probably put <clears throat> awards or extracurricular awards to be more specific because I see all of that is extracurricular, right? Certificate of Appreciation for Dance, Activities and Societies, Dance Club, Sports Team. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If there is something more relevant like high school diploma commerce, uh, no. Again. Okay, that's your high school diploma commerce. Got it. Okay. And in in those years, these were see, 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 I can't understand. It's very confusing. Isha? Mm -hmm. So I would want you to be more relevant out here. Okay. With your work experience, I want to see I want you to shine with your work experience out here. Can I see your face, Isha? Sure, ma'am. Yeah. So put your work experience, start with your work experience because that's most relevant of what you have done, how you've invested your time in the most recent years. And then talk about your education qualification, which is most um, relevant. And then your high school and all of that piece of information. At this point of time, because you already have a lot of information going on, I can think of deleting it. But because you're a fresher, go ahead with it to put it out there but put it in a different category. Shift your work experience, then your education, and then put this in um, extracurricular. Extracurricular awards. Because when you're writing awards, I'm thinking that you've got awarded in 
something very recent and this is long back so i uh, personally don't even push experienced people to put their high school qualifications out there it's become redundant what you recently done is most important but because you are a fresher you put it out there but put it at a completely under different category because i'm looking at oh you've been awarded at something academically because you're putting education in awards so you're confusing my mind and then i get to read that and i'm like no oh. i'm actually i was into it uh, professionally so that's why i thought i should include it so i okay that's fabulous so if you even have done it professionally then it's not highlighted with the right words okay yeah then put it out there if it is not just uh, you know just like a hobby but you uh, you pursued it professionally then do it out there and what are the font size that you used uh i'll have to check it i think 10 or 9 it looks 9 to me 9 is slightly small isha pick it at least 10 mam actually it was not fitting like in one page oh, no. so i know it's 9 It's yeah, nine. It, it looks nine to me. Put it ten and cut down a piece, some piece of information. This could be your CV. It looks like a nice CV of yours. Hmm. But for resume, you can delete. Professionally, you spent time pursuing dance, which is a very nice thing, which you can use and think of how you can use that as an example while you're interviewing. Right, while you're being interviewed, instead of putting it out there. Yeah, I'll do that. Surprise your recruiter by giving, coming, taking example from there and wow them. Yeah, because that is anyway is not so relevant at this point of time. So surprise them that way, and keep it ten. Don't keep it nine. It's too small. This one, it's too much information. You need a little bit of spacing as well. All right, two questions. Let's take it up. Isha will take. We'll spare five minutes more. Apeeksha, uh, asking what is the difference between CV and resume? We just discussed. I know. I think it joins late. Yes. Isha, go ahead. I was just repeating our picture's question about the right. difference between a CV and a resume. Okay. Lot of questions. Where? How do we see questions in 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 here? Is there a way to see? There, there is a tab for the chat box. You can see it there. Okay. What's the difference between CV and resume? What do I write if I don't have any experience for the job field I am applying to? Then it's a tough call. You have to gain skills and experience. You have to have some sort of uh, at least education qualification, uh, Ritika. Otherwise, how am I going to hire you? Why should I be hiring you? At least, if not experience, education qualification is something I will definitely look out for. Just excuse me. Then is it necessary to mention CGPAs and percentages in CV? Uh, res CV, of course, you will put it out there. Resume because you're a fresher, and if it's of high quality, definitely. And you you won't have too many things to offer. If you have internships, projects, then don't mention. But if you don't have it, then mention it. And especially if it is a good one, put it out there. Is it okay to follow a specific resume format for job applications, or should we customize it according to that? There is no format. I repeat. But you can influence, take your inspiration from a lot of formats available out there. Keep in mind the things that I have told you. Let's start with the most. Are there? Are can you give some examples of financial skills which we can pursue and add in resume? It's vast financial skills. Like it's so vast. If you really have to understand, there is CFA, FRM. There are so many online certifications available. Um, um you know we have uh, stock exchanges also giving a lot of certifications on uh, you know different kind of uh, you know brokerage i mean whatever you whatever you want to do so it's pretty vast out there for financial skills also do free online certifications courses hold value yes they do because like i said it, it shows your level of interest and how you want to grow Can you give some examples? Okay, are there some specific keywords that the recruiter looks for? Yes, keywords are what is based on job specification and the job uh, uh, totality. If it's a financial skill, what are the different soft skills and technical skills I am looking for besides what is written in the job description? You have to spend time thinking about that. Is it okay to follow a specific? Okay, we've done that. Is it necessary to mention we've done that? Do free online certifications? Okay. 
Sakshi says, review my resume. We just did that. How important it is, it will be saved as a command, please. How important? So I think most of the questions. Okay. Ma'am, is it good to intern in MNC or startups and which should be mentioned more of? Anything that adds value. Startups are equally good. MNCs are also good. Uh, if you're gaining knowledge of both places, it doesn't have to be, it's not a straight answer. But yeah, startups give you a more, it's more challenging or gives you more uh, opportunity to do a lot of work. But I can't stereotype it, let me tell you. So it really depends upon by where the value is getting added. Uh, the chronology is very simple. You have to start with the most recent thing. If you have done recent projects, recent experiences, recent internships, which are of good value to the job, then you start with that experiences and uh, certifications, etc. And then the relevant education qualification, and then your technical, uh, sorry, any other courses that you have done relevant to it. Um, I would rather put that before the education. And then your soft skills, or how good are you with the computers, etc. Ma'am, can you review my CV? Like it's uploaded. I would have loved to, but we're running short of time. Yes, do it your personal skills like empathy matters. It matters in most of the workplace. So you can definitely, if you have good interpersonal skills and you are empathetic, then definitely mention it as your strength and come up with an example. Don't just say I am. Say why. All right. So I think we've covered most of the questions. Is it professional to have a resume of more than one page? For freshers, I wouldn't say. Yeah, keep it one page up. All right, I think I've covered most of the questions. Um, Mom, we have a question. Is there any point of doing internships which do not match the kind of job that we want to pursue? No. Not at like, uh, you know, it depends on uh, uh, which part of life is it adding value to. So some things you want to do online um, or otherwise in life because it adds value to you other than your professional life. So go ahead and do that. You don't have to mention it in your resume. And if you want to, you can talk about it during your interview. So just don't do anything just for the sake of it. Like, for uh, yes. There are three courses on understanding money, understanding happiness. There are a lot of courses uh, courses available. I would say go and do it. I know it will not uh, shine on your resume based on the job qualification, but it's important to grow as a person as well. Remember, I, it's, I always start with your SWOT. And your SWOT is your base. And to understand who you are and your brand, you have to understand that's what. And you have to keep growing as a person. I am not looking for a robotic person who is doing some things in life only because they want a particular job. I am looking for a human being who can do a terrific job at what they're doing, who is looking forward to grow in my organization, and a person who is excellent with interpersonal skills. So if I am doing a course on happiness, or I am doing a course on people management, or if I'm doing a course on... Uh, um, Money management, I am doing it for personal growth. That is good. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> All right, Danisha. Uh, okay. Sneha, ma'am, before we leave, uh, I'd love to take a screen picture for us social media handles. Yeah, sure. Uh, can everyone please turn on their cameras quickly? 